Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another one of our Southern California housing market updates. Uh, my name is Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate, real estate for people who love houses. It is April 26th. I'm actually up in Sacramento uh, right now today, uh, up here doing lobbying and business meetings and talking about property rights and some of the changes that are coming down the pike. Um, and, you know, we've seen really just in the last couple of weeks, uh, I think we've seen kind of some things shifting on our market. And there's been this question, right, of at what point do rates go to where it really starts to have an appreciable effect on buyer demand? And I think we're at that point and we actually have the data to talk about it. And I don't want to give you kind of a bunch of flowery things. I want to jump right into the data and tell this how this affects your strategy for a buyer or if you are a potential seller. So let's jump right into it. Um, and let's talk about what we're seeing out here in the marketplace. All righty. So let's talk with our active listings on the market. You know, if you're a buyer, right, your number one complaint over the last couple of years has probably not really been that houses are expensive, uh, maybe not until recently at least, but your number one complaint has actually been that there weren't any houses to buy. And if you look here, what you can see is uh, this blue line is under a million dollars and the red line is one to $2 million. And this is total active listings in Los Angeles and Orange Counties. And if you look here, we've got more one to $2 million listings than we had at this point last year, okay. And we've got a little bit less and fewer under 1 million. And that actually makes a lot of sense, right? Because as houses get more expensive, there aren't as many under $1 million houses just in existence, whether they're for sale or not. Um, you can see this number is a little bit higher. What we're seeing though is our total overall inventory, right? That's, that's everything under $2 million is actually a little bit higher right now, this second than it was last year. And if you're a buyer, you know, that gives you a bunch of things. Number one, um, low inventory is what has fueled kind of these, these crazy negotiations, right? And when I talk about crazy negotiations, I mean things like you're not even allowed to look at the house, you're lucky to get it. And by the way, it's $100,000 more than our list price, which we thought was an accurate price, but really isn't. Um, that kind of craziness really gets sucked out of the market when you have a little bit more inventory. Inventory really solves that problem for you. Now, if you're a seller, what does this mean? It means that, you know, if you're thinking of putting your house on the market, you are likely no longer the only game in town for buyers. And I think that that is a real shift if you're a seller. It doesn't mean that it is shifted towards a buyer's market per se, but it's definitely not this crazy one-sided, you can do whatever you want and people just have to put up with it market. And I think we've been in that market really for, gosh, almost two years, right? At least 18 months. And you know, we've kind of gotten used to that. Now, if we take a look here at our new listings in the last 14 days, uh, what do we see here? So again, this number is way down versus where we were at last year, uh, probably around 600 units down. And our one to 2 million is actually up a little bit. So our rate of new listings coming on the market is actually less than it was last year but we're seeing that inventory come up because of the chart we're gonna to get to next. And what I wanna emphasize for people is it's not how many houses come up on the market and it's not just how many houses are getting snapped up and going into escrow, it's the relationship between those numbers that really means a lot. And what we see here is these new escrows hitting the market, right? And here is where if you're a seller, where the problem is and where if you're a buyer, this is where the source of this extra inventory is. Look at the new escrows now versus last year for under a million dollars. It's way down, almost a thousand units. Now, admittedly, part of that is because homes have gotten more expensive, there aren't as many under a million dollars. But if you look for a corresponding increase in one to two million, it's flat. It's basically the exact same as it was. So overall, we are seeing way fewer homes going into escrow than we saw last year. And that is what is causing an increase in inventory. And we can show that relationship through our absorption rate, right? And this is, again, it's based on a two-week rolling average. So if you look here, our absorption rate for under a million is about 80%. Still, 
a strong seller's market, but not quite a crazy town market. And if you look here for one to 2 million, it is down 70%. You can see this trend line here, right? Like this has been heading in this downward existence. This is still what I'd call a, you know, it is a seller's market, but not a particularly strong one for that one to 2 million range. So we're absolutely seeing some changes in these statistics. So if you're feeling like the market is different, it is, and we have the data to back it up. If you look at our closed prices, they're largely flat, but again, remember these closed prices are, this is like four to six week old data, right? So, you know, this may be showing the beginning of a trend. My expectation is I feel like the market is a bit flat. And for those homes that are less desirable, it might've even retreated a little bit, right? People might've just written some crazy offers to get something on that sort of B-level house. And they're not writing those kinds of crazy offers anymore like they once were. This is a huge one. So I'm gonna talk just for a second about what this means, what our 14 day still on the market stat is. And we look at everything that came up in the last two weeks and we say, how many of those are still active or coming soon and available on, uh, on our market? And if we look at that number, right, we see that it is just shot through the roof on one to 2 million, right? And that has gone up to 80%. Like we've seen some higher numbers before. This is not completely out of line, I guess, for where we were last summer. But look at where we are too on even our under 1 million. That has shot up quite a bit. It says that the market is just not readily absorbing these homes that have all come up, you know, in the last two weeks. Now, if we look at our list to close ratio, again, this is four to six week old data. That's slipped a little bit, but it hasn't really slipped like you might think. The average is still significantly above list price. I am telling you, this will change. And the reason that this will change is typically sellers are delayed in their market responses compared to buyers. Buyers are writing offers. They are going, they see how many people are in the open houses. Buyers reflect where the market is. Sellers reflect where they thought the market was 30 days ago. So you watch, we're gonna see these numbers trickle back down towards 100%. I think we're gonna start seeing that pretty soon. Now, if we look at our days on market, this is kind of an interesting one, right? We have seen two weeks in a row, this number has shot up for one to $2 million, but it is still at 20 days on market. This is still a very low number. It is still way lower than it was all through 2021 for that one to 2 million. And our under 1 million is still flat. And what is what does this tell me, right? I'm gonna break it down for you because I think this is a very important point to make and a very important distinction. Our average days on market is calculated based on the homes that have gone into escrow, right? These are ones that someone is buying, not just the market overall, how many days on market, but the ones that are actually getting bought. Our other statistics are based on the whole market, right? Like, so our absorption rate, that's all the houses are still active on the market. That's all the houses. And the reason why that distinction is super important is because that tells you whether, that tells you, is there a big difference in the market for the homes that are actually going in escrow versus everybody else? And there is. And we've been saying that for a couple of weeks, we call it market stratification that those top tier homes, the ones that are the most desirable in whatever price range they're in, right? So we're not just talking expensive houses, we're saying within a certain price range, say 900 or a million, there are 20 listings, right? Those top maybe two to five listings, they're getting all the attention, right? Those are the ones that the buyers are flocking to and they're still enjoying, right? A very strong market, but everybody else in that market is in a real weakened position. Um, and that's a huge change in our market from where it once was, where almost anything got all of the attention, right? Everything sold really quickly. And right now, the good houses are selling quickly, and then there's everybody else. So if you were a seller, what does this mean? It means you don't want to be in the everybody else camp. But if you were a buyer, it means, yes, those super pretty homes that look like they came out of a magazine are great, but you will have the least leverage and bargaining ability as a buyer for those homes. Now, if we look at our affordability, 
we really see what's driving this. This, it, it, this is normalized back in, in June of, of, I think, I think it's mislabeled. It should be 20, 2018 here, but this red line is the CPI index. The blue line is housing payments. And what do you see? Payments and inflation tracking, tracking, tracking. Then we got to 2022 and look what has happened, right? Now, payments have gone up significantly faster than inflation. What is going on? Well, guess what else happened right around this time period? Interest rates went up. This is not a result of underlying prices going up. This is a result of interest rates. And we have been saying for a very long time, I've been beating this drum, that how fast and how far interest rates go up will have a huge bearing on our market response. Now, if you are a buyer, um, unfortunately, rates have gone up very, very quickly, as we're going to show on the next page. Um, you know, and our market has largely absorbed that. But now we're seeing there is, in fact, a breaking point. That's why some of these statistics are starting to change direction a little bit, where the market is saying we can't absorb any more of these higher payments. You know, here, there was such limited supply, it, it, it just didn't matter for a while, right? Like, you know, if there was 100 buyers and 50 houses, you could get rid of those 50 buyers and you'd still sell every house. What we're seeing is, well, nope, now we're at a point where we have the 100, now we have the 50 buyers and the 50 houses, and now we're down to 25 buyers, right, and 50 houses. There is some good news, though, if you're a seller, and that good news is on our next page. Um, this is prevailing 30-year fixed rate mortgages. Right, you can see they started towards the end of the year, and they've just really on a meteoric rise. Uh, last week or so, this curve is starting to change. If we are going to settle around this low five percent mark, that might give our market a little bit of a chance to catch up to these interest rates. We really need time for inflation and other elements to catch up to that, so that these payments don't get completely out of control for too long. The market can absorb a certain amount due to our very limited inventory, and again we still have a limited number of homes coming onto the market, right? That's a, that's a good thing if you're a seller, right? That the market isn't flooded with listings. It's more listings than we had, but it's certainly not flooded with listings, not yet. And I don't, I don't see a lot of market forces causing a flood of listings. In fact, quite the opposite. I think you've got with these higher rates, you've got a bunch of sellers saying, well, we were going to move up. Now we're not going to move up. And what that's doing is that is also reducing, not only is our demand for houses uh, down because of the interest rates, but so is the supply. And that's really sort of tempering. If you were expecting gigantic price drops when interest rates move significantly, this is why they haven't shown up yet. <clears throat> we have some forces that are building in a little bit, though we are starting to see some market changes. So a lot about the future really depends on what happens in these next couple of months in terms of our interest rates taking a pause or are they going to just keep going up? Are we going to hit 6%? Are we going to hit 6.5%, right? And whether that happens or not is really going to have a large bearing on what pressure we have on prices. Um, I also think that that will further reduce new supply of new homes coming out of the market. So don't expect these changes to happen super fast because they won't. Our market is reacting fairly slowly as far as markets go. We still do have a healthy amount of demand. Like I said, these absorption rates are not in the toilet. They're still very healthy, um, but they're looking a lot more like that summertime of 2021, not so much like the springtime. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Um, we love doing these videos for you. Do not forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Also do check out our app, which gives you houses, not hassles. Uh, we don't sell your information. You won't be contacted a huge number of times or your information sold to third parties. It's pretty cool. We think it's great. Um, and if you or someone you know are looking to buy or sell real estate in Southern California and you'd like to use our expertise, absolutely reach out to us. We would love to help you achieve your real estate goals. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you again real soon.